coming into uh, what was once a important stopping place and a hub for uh, local farmers on the old Philadelphia to Pittsburgh Turnpike and the place still has a certain character about it you can't help looking with eyes that see some of the things of yesterday yesterday yesteryear that happened here this was the middle of town right here on that place where there's an auto dealership there there's a uh, there used to be a hotel there this used to be an important stopping place for people traveling and it was also important for the farmers because they uh, would come into town to take care of their needs they would there be a doctor in town here there was a school there was a church there was all the stores there were blacksmiths there was a uh, wagon shop a tannery and a lot of things that uh, you need if you lived out on a farm looking out here <clears throat> it's mapping from 1917 it is a road atlas the automobile has become a major factor and this thick red line going through here is known was known as the Lincoln Highway this is Greensburg right over here and going west out of Greensburg one of the major things you're going to come to on the Lincoln Highway was Adamsburg right after Grapeville and you notice right down below here was Edna which we will also see something about this is in town in Adamsburg you notice they preserve memory of the days when the Lincoln Highway went through there this is a corner in town in the 1860s a fellow named Benjamin Hebrank had this place he may have also run a store there but what else we know about Benjamin is that he also had a tannery just out of town this is the place we were just looking at right here this is Benjamin Hebrank's uh, tannery up here now I'm going to shift this about 90 degrees so we can look at it it might make it a bit simpler to focus on some of the things this is Hebrank's place his house that we saw this is the tannery up here coming down the street this way John Melville who had a store in town uh, Leisinger was a guy who made saddles and bridles things made out of uh, leather for horse horseware here is Melville's store here's Zimmerman's tin shop on the corner you see the, the hotel right in the center of town and here's James Gregg having a store and right up above that was Mrs. Kreider's house which we will see that's where Mrs. Kreider was living in 1867 remember 1867 was right after the Civil War and there were a lot of widows at that time a lot of guys didn't come home this shows us looking down Main Street looking east looking from up in the air this is what we are looking at right here seeing at it from the bird's eye point of view this is route 30 going by now it recalls the memory that once upon a time the Lincoln Highway used to go right through there but does not anymore route 30 fortunately has been moved which actually preserved Adamsburg as a very nice quaint little town reminiscent of the old turnpike Pittsburgh to Philadelphia Pike and the uh, Lincoln Highway also coming out of Adamsburg is a road called the Edna Road and what is all that about 
Here's Adamsburg that we were just looking at. Here is the Edna Road coming down to Edna Number One. That was a mine, a little patch town, coal town, where the people who lived there had to uh, live in housing built by the mine, and they could be thrown out if they went on strike. And that's what happened, actually. And we also recalled of another company closer to Adamsburg, the Adamsburg Gas Coal Company, owned by, uh, not Adamsburgers, actually owned by people from Greensburg, uh, one of the big movers in that company was Will Huff, he was secretary treasurer. Will was the brother of George Franklin Huff, uh, at one time a United States congressman and also a major figure in the development of local industry. This is at mapping 1867. What it shows us is even as far back as 1867, there was a mine just a bit south of Adamsburg. This is a symbol for a mine right here. And remember, Edna Mine was just right over here. And we recall things that uh, even though Adamsburg was not actually a uh, mining town, a lot of the people there at one point got, got work in the mines because that was the big thing going on. This is showing population from 1850 and going way up to close to the present. But we see a spike here in the year 1910. Why were there so many people in Adamsburg in 1910? I remember earlier I described it having to do with the automobile, which was a factor. But another big factor was the mines. See, the mines in 1910 were on strike. Uh, when the mines went on strike, the coal companies would throw the uh, poor miners with their families right out on the street because the uh, coal companies like to have control. They had company-owned housing. And what happened in this case was the United Mine Workers Union moved in. They were trying to unionize the miners, and they, they supplied tent tent cities, temporary cities for the miners, and one of them was at Adamsburg. Uh, in the summer of 1910, there was a rally at Adamsburg, and the band, Adamsburg Band and the Edna Band, played to give the rally a bit of wallop. They were, the rally was the mine, the coal miners union trying to rally the people to stay faithful to the strike. It was a hard winter, 1910, 1911, and actually there were people who died, not just grown-ups, but children who died from exposure, having been thrown out into the cold and living in ten cities and temporary encampments. Uh, in the summer of 1911, the United Mine Workers conceded, and the men went back to work. But it's an old lesson that what is important is not winning battles, but winning wars. That strike was, was but one battle. And the war was actually won by the Union because the Union eventually unionized all the miners in the area. History is a good uh, teacher of lessons many times. We have come up with a rather old map of Adamsburg. Uh, it was done 1841, that was. And that was the year when the town was incorporated as a borough, 1841. <clears throat> and the person who made the map obviously was not terribly familiar with map conventions because they made the thing upside down. That's why I have it presented here upside down because it's made uh, with the top to the south 
And most people are used to looking at maps with the top to the north, and that's the way I oriented it. What you can see is it's not a large place then. I find it of interest that there was, you know, things like this. There was the tan yard, which we previously mentioned, Hebrink. Hebrink had a tan yard up here. And there was also a steam mill coming out of town in 1841, which is fairly early, but not the first one. <clears throat> what I mean is I'll show you. This is the borough of Adamsburg right here. And right over here to the east, S.G. Mill. That's a steam grist mill. That was Michael Bachman's mill. From other sources, we know that he, he built that mill in 1836, which is earlier, fairly early for a, a steam mill. Not the earliest one in the township. Uh, we can say that the earliest one was uh, right outside of Greensburg. Jacob Hugus had set up a steam mill in um, 1822. And by 1826, Eli Colder had set up one in Greensburg itself. We're getting a look at some of the people who did things in and around Adamsburg. Now here was Francis Stater who in 1845 is advertising that he can take care of your undertaking business. He bought himself a new hearse. Maybe he made it, I'm not sure. Respectfully informs the citizens of Adamsburg and vicinity that he has prepared himself with a new and neat hearse. And notice, he's in the cabinet making business. Uh, what we should know about times back then was that uh, the guy who was an undertaker was often the guy who could make the coffin, which would not surprise people then because it was an old European tradition that had carried over to America. Other people that we see doing things and making things around 1840 at Adamsburg, there was a lady named Mary Ewing. She advertised herself as a milliner also a person who could make mantuas. And if she could make mantuas, that meant she would, was somewhat in touch with European uh, customs and styles. A mantua was a woman's dress that had been designed in Italy, and it was catching on in the States as a rather fashionable kind of clothing. Another person around 1840, who was making things in uh, Adamsburg was Louis Klein, C-L-I-N-E. Louis was a tombstone carver, and his father had been in the same business there in Adamsburg. And that is probably enough for this one. And we'll say that's all, folks, and we'll see you again.